He is a lawyer, activist, and advocate for injured cyclists. He is also a bike crash survivor himself, hit in a bike lane. Ugh. Come on up and share your story with us, please. Please welcome David. <laughs> Ryan, uh, thanks so much. Um, I was sitting there uh, asking myself if I was going to um, cry as I do in most presentations. <laughs> you got it! Because of my, because of my uh, trauma. Uh, so um, it made me feel comfortable hearing what you have to go through, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, my name is Dave. Um, have some notes here. Um, so thanks to Bike Minds and uh, Curbside Cycle and uh, the community, really, uh, the cycling community, um, for being so supportive of, of me and us and each other. Um, and you guys inspire me every day. Um, online, there's always great things going on. And uh, on the side of the road, we're always talking to each other. Um, and saying, that was insane, can you believe that? <laughs> so, it's, it's, nice, it's, it's nice to be, it's nice to be uh, here with you tonight and to be riding with you always. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm a personal injury lawyer, uh, but I specialize uh, ex almost exclusively uh, with injured cyclists, um, survivors of sexual assault, uh, survivors of other forms of violence, um, P police, uh, police racism, and other forms of racism. Um, so yeah, personal injury and human rights. Um, oh, yeah, right, this thing. Hello. Um, so my crash. I am a crash survivor. Uh, it's, I, I almost uh, I'm trying to be flippant about this. I almost died uh, last New Year's um, in an assault, and uh, I was hospitalized for a month. And then uh, <clears throat> my first week back full time at work was uh, Monday, May 13th. I had an appointment with my trauma counselor on the 14th, and on the way there, uh, I got right hooked in a bike lane. Oh. Um, yeah, it was a bummer. Um, so I I did all the wrong things, and I rode home. Uh, like I rode to the appointment, and he's like, "You should probably not be here." Uh, I rode home and realized that uh, I was. There were some injuries. Um, I see your sling. I had a sling also. Um, my wrist and my elbow ultimately uh, were broken. Um, so, yeah, I you know after after this I plotted or I, I like what did I do wrong? And so I've created a, this crash card uh, which is over there. Uh, make sure you grab this and you never use it. But if you need to put it in your back pocket or in the, your bag. And it gives you all the things that I did partly um, and then didn't do. So it's like a combination of my things that I did right and things my clients have done right. So uh, put that in your in your in your bag uh, and never use it. Um, so yeah, like initially I just was concerned about my physical health. I went to the ER, you know, did all the things uh, physically that I was, you know, required to do to to feel better. Um, and that progressed, and uh, I got out of the sling and the wrist brace. Uh, still wear it sometimes for biking. And then I started riding again, and I realized that like my relationship with cycling had changed. Um, it was months later. Uh, I'm biking to work. I'm always angry. Um, I'm upset. Like I'm fearful of everything. Um, I'm frustrated, and I like this is not. I started riding in the city, and I rode for years, and never felt this way. And so, like, what what has happened here? Um, so, um, you know, I so something something was wrong, and like I had addressed my physical health, but didn't had not addressed like my mental health and the trauma associated with being hit by a thousand pounds of steel. Um, and uh, I post this article here because it's something that I read a couple months after uh, by Bronwyn Graves, and it's in it's online now, and it's like such a powerful art article. I forwarded it to all my clients and like read it myself, obviously. 
Um, and it talks about like that fear, like when you do get back on your bike, um, like how, how the trauma affects you, uh, you know, to your core. I mean, make something that was like really ple pleasurable, uh, but terrifying. Um, so, uh, I'm really, I'm really privileged. Um, I already had a trauma counselor, uh, unfortunately, but fortunately. Um, and so I, ha I had a trauma counselor and I had finances to continue to pay him, um, to see him. So, you know, I approached him and said, this is really bothering me, the cycling stuff, in addition to this assault stuff we've been working on. And like, can we, uh, and so we started uh, doing sessions related to uh, the trauma associated with being hit by a motor vehicle at high speed. Um, and yeah, um, so we worked on like tools uh, to deal with my stress and like fears and frustrations and, uh, and it wasn't like a, an overnight thing obviously, um, but it was really helpful and uh, I see Noah to this day um, for, for that and other things. Um, and yeah. Uh, it, it is a privilege in that I could afford it, but if you are uh, hit in a motor vehicle accident, um, the no fault insurance covers you, so you, we can't you can get this treatment and not pay out of pocket for it. Um, so it's a whole another talk I do in some places, but it's not it's not for today. Um, but so yeah, I saw Noah and then like started like doing things to adjust. Uh, making it so that I could ride and feel that joy and feel that uh, that fun again. So you know, I, I changed my handlebars to something less aggressive, um, so that when I'm biking, I feel a bit more in control. And I see like what's going on a bit better. Uh, I'm 37. I don't need drop bars probably. Um, uh, they're pretty cool still, but uh, you know, I I like it's. Pretty, like I had bought a full uh, face mask uh, for like my head trauma that I had suffered and then I'm like I'm probably going to keep wearing this because just being extra protected I felt uh, that additional level of safety of biking around and I still wear it it's like over there and it's cooler in the winter than in the summer but um, <laughs> the goggles help uh, but I, I'm going to keep riding I'm going to keep wearing it because it, it like provides me with that extra level it's, it's a step I can take to make my riding fun again um, you know, uh, I ride at off hours, like, if it's before 7.30, cool, if it's past 7.30, I'm not riding until 10, and, like, that's something that I can do. Um, I take back roads, um, so that, like, I enjoy riding through neighborhoods and, like, checking out, like, oh, this is a cool, um, Portuguese neighborhood or, or what have you. It's a bit longer, but I feel safer and I have fun and I enjoy my city. Um, I'm not seeing any signs, so... I was told to. Oh, really? Oh, well, now I'm really in trouble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, well, let's, you know how I said I wasn't going to talk about that accident benefit stuff? Well, let me tell you. Um, yeah, so, like, I adjusted my routes. I adjusted my safety. Um, I used to, like, ride with no lights on my bike, and as I've gotten older and, like, had these uh, experiences, now I have like a crazy life that's probably really bad for car drivers, but you know what, I don't care. Uh, at least you see me. Yeah, you may be blind. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, to, today, like, I continue uh, to love cycling. I'm not all the way there yet. I'm not where I was. Maybe I'll never be back to where I was. And, like, you know, even though I've made steps forward every day, there's... In our unfortunate circumstances in the city, there's there's steps back like this. I'm walking here where I park my bike. There's three cars parked in the bike lane. You know, like that's throwing me into traffic, and that's scary. So I have to just continue to deal with that stuff. But I'm taking steps forward as I even when I get pushed back. Um, you know, I love cycling, uh, advocacy. I'm doing a ton of that through my work, um, like lawyer stuff, but also like more grassroots and uh, I would call radical stuff, um, which is great. Um, you know, I bike to work every day uh, through my neighborhood and through my community when I'm not walking my dog. Um, yeah, I guess like my main point is that I want people to know that 
there can be major uh, mental health traumas associated with like um, crashes or, or, or things or uh, other bike related traumas uh, in the city. A collision with a car in particular, uh, like I said, is a major traumatic event uh, to be hit by a thousand pounds of steel. Um, like that's really serious. And uh, police don't consider it, uh, our politicians don't. Like, so you need to look after yourself um, and know that there are supports out there. Uh, we can access them and we should. Like, don't, you know, if you get in a traumatic, like a bike crash, like, don't just brush it off like I did and, and bike home 30 minutes with a broken wrist. Like, that's stupid. Um, and don't do that for, for your mental health either. Um, you know, seek out the supports and uh, I can help you get them if you need. But, uh, but yeah, they're out there. Um, Put the crash cards over there, and some of my uh, my biking lawyer cards, and then I got a ton of bike lights made, so they're there for free too. Questions? Hey there. Hey David, I think it's great that you're out there now as the biking lawyer. I Thanks. wish that you were around back in 2015 when I had a collision. So one one of your slides used the term accident. And it kind of bugs me because I don't believe that we should use the word accident because accidents are things that cannot be prevented. I use the word collision, and I think that's the proper term. So I'm just making that comment um, because when I was hit by a van as a new-ish cyclist, having the right of way, that wasn't an accident. That was this motorist. <coughs> Perpetrating violence on you—that was a collision. Uh, yeah, thanks. I 100% agree with you. I don't know that slide, but it was definitely an oversight. Um, I, I, I make mistakes sometimes. These cards were made two years ago, and they say accident on them, but I call them a crash card. Uh, on my court documents that I file with the Superior Court of Justice, I don't say accident anymore, I say crash, so I definitely hear what you're saying, and thanks for pointing that out, and I'll change that. Thanks. Sorry to hear about your crash. I mean, that was, a, that was when I was sort of a new-ish cyclist, as I said, so of course, you know, I think a lot of new-ish cyclists would quit at that point, and I didn't, but I had the same experience that you had, with, it was hard to get back out there on the road and force myself to tough it out and to deal with it. Thanks. Uh, when I think about the licensing process as a driver, I remember being taught what you should do if you get into an accident with another um, motorist. I don't ever remember anything about if you were to hit a cyclist, for example. Is that changing, and what should a motorist do to hit a cycle, somebody's cycle? I mean, be a good human. Uh, <laughs> I have like a, a shocking amount of hit and runs. Um, I have a shocking amount of bike-related assaults. Um, the guy who hit me stopped and exchanged information, and like, I think that's required by law. Um, yeah, if, we, if you hit someone or are hit, exchange information, take a ton of pictures, um, and make sure the person's all right, and call emergency services. Yeah. Uh, on this crash card is uh, like all the things you should write down, um, and emergency service numbers. <laughs>